our speaker para sa ating first topic is Dr. Maris J. Nipomoceno. She is a diplomat of the Philippine Society for Microbiology and Infectious Diseases, or otherwise known as PISMID. She is also a fellow of the Philippine College of Physicians, and she is a graduate of the Adult Infectious Diseases Fellowship at UP. PGH. So let us welcome our speaker for the topics about how the SARS-CoV-2 vaccine works and the basics of vaccinology. Let us welcome Dr. Maris J. Nepomuceno. So um, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Sir Rad, for that uh, kind introduction. So again, I'm Dr. Maris Nepomuceno, and today I was tasked to talk about um, COVID-19 vaccines and uh, HIV infections, specifically uh, the basics of vaccinology and how the vaccines work. So I will be the first part of uh, a three lecture series. No? So this will be the outline of my lecture today. Um, before anything else, I would also like to thank um, the members of the PSMID who have been um, continuously updating our COVID-19 vaccine primer, and this will be uh, the basis of some of my slides. Okay, so um, I will be, I'll try to simplify uh, the explanation as much as possible. I will be talking in um, a mixture of English and Tagalog for my lecture, okay? So uh, first of all, uh, mag-review muna tayo ng natural response ng katawan sa infection. So a pathogen, can be a bacterium, a virus, a parasite, or a fungus na nagkakos ng sakit. No? So yung mga pathogen na ito ay may dalang pinatawag nating antigen na responsible sa pag-induce ng immune response para gumawa yung katawan natin ng uh, antibody. So kapag na-expose tayo sa antigen for the first time, medyo mabagal makarespond ang immune system natin kaya susceptible tayo na magtaroon ng sakit. Pero sa susunod na ma-expose tayo doon sa parehong antigen, mayroon na tayong tinatawag na memory cells. So this means that if we are exposed to the dangerous pathogen or antigen in the future, mayroon na tayong acquired immunity and yung immune system natin ay capable na magbigay ng mas mabilis at mas epektibong response kaya protektado na tayo sa sakit. Okay? So, itong figure na ito, pinapakita niya yung mga major components ng adaptive immunity natin. So, sa acute adaptive immunity and also sa pag-establish ng immune memory, importante yung mga cells na tinatawag na T-cells, uh, may CD4 and CD8 cells, and yung mga B-cells na uh, responsible sa paggawa ng antibodies natin. No? So, Sa pag-establish ng immune memory, meron pang uh, nadagdag na memory cells. Okay? So, ang principle of vaccination ay ginagaya nito ang isang infection para ma-activate yung natural specific defense mechanism ng katawan natin against a pathogen and para magkaroon tayo ng immunologic memory or acquired immunity. So with vaccination, hindi tayo nagkakasakit tulad ng kapag na-expose na tayo sa natural na infection. So yung ability ng isang vaccine or bakuna to elicit a measurable immune response ay tinatawag na immunog immunogenicity. So uh, halimbawa, for example, ma-expose tayo sa varicella virus na nagkakos ng chicken pox. No? Uh, maaari tayong mag-develop ng disease. So, kaya tayo nagkakaroon ng mga sintomas ng fever, ng rash, or ng ubo. And yung iba sa atin ay baka magkaroon pa nga ng uh, pneumonia o kaya ma-hospital pa. No? Tapos, pag gumaling tayo after the infection, nakaka-produce yung katawan natin ng uh, antibodies against uh, varicella or chicken pox. So, kung ikukumpara natin yun sa vaccination, kung mabakunahan tayo ng uh, varicella or chicken pox vaccine, um, magkakaroon din tayo ng antibodies against the virus, pero hindi natin nararamdaman yung sintomas nung sakit. No? Or kung meron man, mild lang siya. So, ibig sabihin, with vaccination, nakukuha natin yung benefit 
ng immunity, pero natatakasan natin yung pagkakaroon ng mismong sakit. So for people with HIV, we know that HIV infects white blood cells in the body's immune system, specifically yung tinatawag na CD4 T cells. No? And um, this could lead to an immunocompromised state. So sa mga pag-aaral, nakikita nila na with HIV infection, apektado yung several natural defenses sa infection, kasama na yung um, mga cell-mediated immunity, yung B-cell function, and also yung tinatawag na humoral immune responses or yun nga yung paggawa natin ng mga antibodies. No? So, bakit apektado lahat ng defenses ng isang tao with HIV infection kung yung CD4 lang mismo ang pinaka naaapektuhan? Um, nangyayari yun kasi ang CD4 T cells, marami siyang function. No? So, aside from yung sariling function ng CD4 T cells, yung um, direct effect niya sa antiviral immunity, meron din kasi siyang effect sa iba pang cells ng immune system natin. So, naa-affect din niya yung function ng mga B cells as well na as ng um, CD8 cells. So, uh, kaya basically affected yung response ng people with HIV sa um, pagkakaroon ng uh, immune response. Okay? So, uh, with that said, vaccination in uh, people with HIV may not confer the same degree of protection gained by immunocompetent persons. And based sa mga studies, overall, vaccines tend to be less immunogenic, meaning yung ability ng bakuna na mag-elicit ng immune response ay mas mababa, and uh, yung antibody responses are uh, found to be shorter-lived in the setting of HIV infection. So in general, yung protective antibodies are more likely elicited when vaccines are administered pag uh, early pa in the infection, secondly, before bumaba yung CD4 cell count, and thirdly, kung mababa na yung, uh, yung CD4 after ng um, introduction of antiretroviral therapy para magkaroon muna ng immune reconstitution and para mapababa yung uh, viral level. So, um, as an example of how low CD4 and HIV infection affect, affect vaccine effectiveness, tignan natin yung data on hepatitis B vaccine non-responders. So, uh, based sa mga pag-aaral, nakita nila na mas mababa ang vaccine effectiveness ng hepatitis B for HIV infected individuals kung titignan yung effect sa pag-produce ng antibodies na tinatawag na anti-HDS. Okay? So, uh, kung titignan natin for immunocompetent or yung mga um, people uh, without HIV infection, the vaccine effectiveness reaches up to 95% as compared to those with HIV na around 20 to 70% lang. Uh, so, tulad nung explain ko kanina, maaaring dahil ito sa mababang CD4, and uh, yung CD4 T cell level na nakita nilang kailangan para magkaroon ng mas magandang effect ang pagbakuna ay nasa 100 to 500 um, cells, uh, specifically for, it, for hepatitis C ito. Okay? So ganun pa man, importante pa din na magpabakuna because we know that we can prevent uh, infectious diseases through vaccination. And importante na maprotektahan tayo kahit partial protection pa ito. Uh, kapag karamihan sa mga tao sa community ay vaccinated against a disease, yung ability ng pathogen na kumalat ay nalilimitahan. So, ang tawag dito ay herd or indirect or population immunity. Kapag may herd immunity, napoprotektahan din indirectly ang mga tao na hindi maaaring mabakunahan tulad ng mga very young babies and those who have compromised immune systems. So, including yung mga uh, patients natin with HIV, specifically yung mababa pa yung CD4 count. So just to explain uh, further kung ano ba yung concept ng herd immunity, so i-compare natin kung paano natatransmit ang isang infectious uh, disease in a population without herd immunity called a naive population and a population with herd immunity. So if you introduce an infectious host in a population of naive or wala pang immunity, 
it is very easy to transmit the infection uh, the infection no so uh directing the point that a uh, majority of the people would have been infected and eventually they develop immunity from the natural infection no with herd immunity or when the population is around 70% immune um kahit mag-introduce ka ng infectious host it will be uh more difficult for the disease to spread because the infectious host is surrounded by people who are already immune. And in effect, even those na wala pang immunity are indirectly protected. Okay? So, ang natural infection alone to achieve herd immunity will lead to a lot of unacceptable and unnecessary human death. So, ang vaccination for most infections ay isang critical way to reach the number of immune individuals necessary to achieve herd immunity. So from history, only herd immunity induced by vaccination was able to eliminate viruses in the past, so specifically yung smallpox virus. So for COVID-19, why do we need vaccines? So the numbers explain it. So natural infection with COVID has already reached greater than 100 million cases with 2 million deaths worldwide. And in the Philippines alone, we already have more than 500,000 cases with more than 10,000 deaths. And syempre, ayaw natin na continuously tumaas yung number na ito. So paano natin ito mapipigilan? So yung current data na meron tayo for SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19 suggests that around 70% of the population should be immunized to halt spread of the disease. So uh, in simple terms, for example, we have a population of 3 billion, around 2 billion should become immune para ma-achieve natin yung herd immunity. Okay, so pumunta naman tayo dun sa mga available na klase ng bakuna. So, yung mga vaccine technology na ito ay hindi naman exclusive sa SARS-CoV-2 vaccine. Actually, nagamit na rin ang mga vaccine technology na ito para makagawa ng iba pang mga bakuna in the past. Okay, so currently, merong at least eight types being tried against the coronavirus and they rely on different viruses or viral parts. So either yung buong virus or parts ng virus, no? So you can see in the figure how many of the vaccines in development are fall under these categories and yung pinakamarami would be the protein-based vaccines. So let's quickly discuss them one by one. So yung first uh, vaccine type or technology would be the nucleic acid vaccine. So specifically for COVID, we have mRNA vaccine. So uh, ano ba yung uh, concept, paano nag-work yung bakuna na ito? So yung mRNA, ang may, daladala niya yung blueprint ng uh, viral protein. So yun yung pinapackage doon sa bakuna. And then pag inintroduce siya sa isang pasyente, uh, natatranslate yung blueprint na yun into the viral proteins and yung viral proteins ang nag induce ng immune response sa katawan nung nabakunahan. Okay? So as we all know, the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines fall under this type and currently, uh, no other licensed vaccines uh, use this technology. The second uh, type or technology is the viral vector vaccine. No? So uh, ang concept naman nito is that you have a harmless virus, so for example, a harmless adenovirus, and that harmless virus contains the uh, gene of the coronavirus, specifically yung spike protein gene, yun yung laman niya, yun yung nilalagay dun sa bakuna, so that when the vaccine is given to a patient, nagkakaroon ng immune response yung tao to the coronavirus spike protein. So the examples of the um, current vaccine candidates using this technology are the AstraZeneca, are the vaccines produced by AstraZeneca, Johnson and Johnson, and Gamaleya. Okay. Pero meron na ring a uh, previous vaccine nagumamit ng technology na ito, which is the Ebola vaccine. Yung third type of vaccine are the virus vaccines. No, so they can they are uh, whole viruses which are weakened or inactivated, and these weakened or 
or inactivated viruses are the ones uh, in the vaccine. And then when you introduce this to a host, uh, the weakened or inactivated virus will also elicit an immune response in the host. And the examples of the uh, coronavirus vaccine uh, candidate under this type are, the, are those um, produced by Sinopharm and Sinovac. But um, other examples of uh, virus vaccines would be for weekend, uh, John Magpofol yung uh, measles, mumps, rubella, and chicken pox. And for inactivated virus vaccines naman, examples would be the rabies and hepatitis A vaccine. So the last uh, type of uh, vaccine is, are the protein-based vaccines. So either this uh, vaccines either contain um, fragments of the virus called protein subunits or um, an empty virus shell. So virus-like particles na kinokopya yung structure ng coronavirus. And so when you introduce this again as a vaccine, the host will uh, produce an immune response. So for the COVID-19 uh, vaccine candidate, um, Novavax falls under the protein subunit type, okay? But uh, other vaccines that use this technology are the tetanus and diphtheria vaccines. And for virus-like particles naman, the HPV vaccine. So actually, uh, this is uh, already my last slide. I would just like to briefly explain how uh, vaccines are developed, manufactured, and um, eventually licensed. No? So vaccines go through several phases, so phase one, phase two, and phase three. And um, the goal is to prove that the vaccines are effective and also safe. And the uh, regulatory bodies assigned to license these vaccines are the Food and Drug Administration. Okay, so before sila mabigyan ng license, it has to be proven that are, they are both effective and safe and that the benefits outweigh the risk. And then when, they, when the manufacturers prove that, the FDA will give license. However, since we are in a pandemic situation, I'm sure everybody has already heard about the emergency use authorization given by the FDA. So in a pandemic, um, they want us to be able to have access na expedited to these vaccine candidates. So after uh, studying uh, available data, the FDA can give an emergency use authorization even while phase three trials are ongoing. Um, how, so our vaccine safe. So again, as I said, before they are licensed, they underwent careful and rigorous testing. And specifically for COVID-19 vaccines, even if the trials are still ongoing, they have to go through a proper uh, process to acquire emergency use authorization. And even when they get an EUA, they will still be continuously monitored for side effects. Okay, so I think that's my last slide. I would just like to recap what I talked about. And um, I would like to give the floor to our next speaker already. So thank you very much for your kind attention.